Good evening. Welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study. My name is Nick. I will be your, I will be your guide this evening. Sounds like a safari or something, right? <laughs> okay, so a facilitator oh, guide. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we have an awesome panel today of all ages. That's what I love, right? Um, so let's start with introductions real quick. I was going to say, can you start the magic school bus thing song? We'll just all hop on the bus. My name is Dominique Gomez. I'm glad to be here with you guys tonight. My name is Nelly Chavez. I'm J.D. Longoria. <laughs> okay, so before we dive into our study, you like that, dive? Dive, Because yes. I'm a guide. Um, anyways, I would like to ask our panel um, just a question. Um, if they've created their New Year's resolution, all right? So who wants to start that? That's for anybody to start. No pressure on anybody. We'll just wait until someone's ready to go. <laughs> we'll just go. I didn't make any New Year's resolutions. However, Aubrey texted me and she said, would you like to read the Bible in a year with me through the Bible app? And so it's, I, I didn't start out intending that to be my New Year's resolution, but it has been wonderful. Nice. So that's my New Year's resolution. That's, 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 a, that's a big one. one. That's a big that one. Too. Mine was, well, I'm kind of the same way. I didn't really think to really name one. But when you asked this question, I just started thinking back to like what I wanted my mindset to be. And so it's just to kind of start every day with a positive mindset and like start off on the right way and not let things from yesterday still bother me today and just try and be as optimistic and positive in a world that's sometimes not that way. Okay. Uh, well, I'll go next. I'm not as, uh, I, I guess you can say, um, I guess I'm not as mature or on that level compared to the other answers that I've heard. Um, but mine is just to be more hydrated with water. Amen. That's good. Okay. Just be more hydrated with water. Um, it, for those that know me, I, I'm trying. I mean, it's a smaller bottle, but I'm trying. I love the, uh, I love Sprite. So uh, I'm not trying to advertise for them. I, they don't pay me anything, but I do love Sprite and Gatorade. But uh, yeah, for sure, just to hydrate more with water. Water. What about you, JD? <laughs> I kind of don't really have any, but uh, one of the goals, is I think it's just a personal goal, is going. I'm gonna f go back to school and get my master's. I think that's nice. you know something that you know I'm gonna f do this year. I've talked it over with my wife, and we've, you know I'm, that's what I want to do is go back and get my master's. So Amen. awesome, that's, that's good stuff. Well, thanks for sharing that with uh, your peers and also the viewers. Um, thank you for logging in. Hope you guys had dinner already or about to have dinner. And thanks for having dinner. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. Appreciate it. So uh, this month's theme is Can You Hear Me Now? Um, the theme is based on the scripture, Mark chapter 4, verse 24. Um, the theme was based off the Verizon commercial from years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the one that showed the guy walking around asking, can you hear me now? Doesn't he work for Sprint now? Yes. <laughs> so in fact, that guy is now with Sprint and T-Mobile. For yeah, those of right. you did, that didn't know, they actually yeah. merged. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who here has a Sprint or T-Mobile? Exactly. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, I'm just joking. If you get, if you got Sprint and T-Mobile, you're good. I'm I'm, I'm just saying. You know what I mean, good service. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good, good thing. Service. It's a good thing. But uh, wow, it threw me off a little bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's the same. That's where we kind of got that theme from, or I, I should say, Pastor got that from. Yeah. Um, so for today's study, um, I want us to read Mark chapter four, verses twenty-one through twenty-four. And uh, I'm really going to, I really want to focus on the beginning of verse 24. Um, but we're actually going to do this, you know, I am a teacher. Uh, we have a lot of educators here. But three of us are teachers here. Um, but uh, I want to do a popcorn read. So basically, just we'll take one verse each and just get through it that way. Sounds great. I will start off with verse 21. And it says, he said to them, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on a stand? Verse 22, for whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. Uh, 23, if anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. 24, consider carefully what you hear. He continued, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and even more. So, as I mentioned before, I would like to focus on that first part of 24. It says, consider carefully what you hear what what do you think jesus is trying to tell us to tell us here and nelly if you can start that off what do you think he's trying to sure. tell us um my um the new king james version said take heed 
And take heed means to pay attention, to be careful, tune in to what I am saying. Jesus is asking his disciples to pay attention. Exactly. Dominique? I agree. I think that it is so easy in the world that we live in to conform. And I think here he's saying, right, you're right. Be careful what you hear. Pay attention to me, which means that you have to be bold and you have to be different. And you have to be careful what you allow not just your eyes to see, but what you allow your, your ears to hear as well. Exactly. J.D.? Um, uh, you know, basically the same thing is to take your time and understand the Word of God, um, you know, because it, it's going to help you and you're going to use it. So if you don't pay attention to it, you know, it just goes in one ear out the other, you know. Mm-hmm. So you have to take heed. You have to sit there and consider the words that are being spoken to you or what you're reading and, uh, and, and try to fully understand them to the best of your ability. And if you don't understand, you can always ask someone to help you out. Yeah, and I think that's where it becomes, I think that's a dangerous place to be at as a Christian when you get to just the routine of things, right? You come to church, and that's when it, beca- it can begin to, like like you said, one year out the other um, because we're so used to routine. Um, so to follow up that question, what are some things that may serve as a barrier when it comes to communication and listening to God? Who wants to start that one off? I can start. Um a couple of the things that I put down, uh, the first one would be music. Um, I was not as musically, I guess, inclined, or I didn't really pay attention to music until I married Nick, and you know, he was, you know, he was teaching me how to listen to the beats and listen for the bass in a song. Which, but back then, I n- never listened to the bass in a song. And but it's very important, I guess, to point out that it's not just about a good beat. Of m- when you're listening to music, what are the words saying to you? What are you? What are they speaking positive things into your life? What are they talking about? Um, another thing I put down is movies. What do they portray? What is your mind going to meditate on after you've finished watching that movie? Um, I've never been a huge scary movie person. Um, there are times when I will want to, you know, delve into the scary. Uh, spooky things but never anything demonic or because I've uh, I've experienced that as a child and it was just it it, um it does something to your spirit when you allow your mind to meditate on things like that and and the last thing I put was just career family and kids these Mm -hmm. things can become idols to us so quickly Mm -hmm. and if we're paying more attention to what our husband is saying or what our kid is saying or where we want our career to take us we might not always be listening to what God is telling us he wants where he wants to take us. Yeah, and I think it comes down to prioritizing your energy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, can definitely serve as a barrier. Uh, Nelly? Anything? Um, I kind of took it in a different direction. What are some barriers to listening to God? I know that our own desires can yeah. be a big barrier. I remember as a very young Christian that I fell in, I, I fell in love with a young man who was not a Christian, and I... I had some friends that were a little bit more mature than I was, and one day when I came to see them and share the news that I had met this guy, um, the first thing the husband wanted to know, his name is Phil, Phil asked me, he said, well, is he a Christian? And I said, well, no, but, Mm -hmm. and first thing he said out of his mouth when I said that, he said, cut it off. I did not want to hear that Mm -hmm. because I wanted to follow my own desire. To make a long story short, I was in a relationship for two or three years that ended up very badly for me because I was doing the wrong thing Mm -hmm. and I didn't pay heed. I didn't pay attention to what someone a little bit more mature than myself was telling me. He was telling me the word, but I didn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Another thing I think that is a barrier to listening to God are our own agendas. Mm -hmm. The things that we want or we want to accomplish or the pursuit of prestige, money, position, yeah. those things will get in our way because they don't always line up with God's word. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to hear that. Yeah, so. yeah. Very good. Thanks for sharing that. that. Uh, anything to that, Jody? Yeah, I have a couple things. Um, the first thing I put as a barrier, you know, would be us trying to understand with our own logic. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we'll, we'll, we'll explain everything, what God does, but we want to do it logically. Like there's a reason for that happens, yeah. you know. Um, God works in mysterious ways. He does. He's in the supernatural. So when you try to fathom things with your uh, own mind and make it logical to understand, 
you know, you have to have a reason. Oh, well, this happened because of this, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's so many things throughout the Bible that happened that cannot be explained. Mm -hmm. There's things that you've probably seen in real life. I've seen things that cannot be expla mm -hmm. explained with my natural mind. But that's a barrier that, you know, you want to look at it logically. You know, yeah. it's really hard for, you know, someone who's, you know, it's not hard, but it can be a barrier for, like, someone who's really educated or smart to, you know, oh, well, here's the reason, you know, like science. We, it has to be backed up by science, mm -hmm. you know. This is the only way this could happen. Yeah. Uh, I think another thing um, I put down was when we focus on our own faults, too. Like, why, uh, you know, God can get you through anything, but we want to put the blame like, uh, well, I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. so it's a barrier. Uh, mm -hmm. I have faults, and mm -hmm. I can't get through that. And, um, you know, when we look at all the wrong that we've done, we, we don't think God's grace is sufficient for us and that, right. you know, that he, you know, he can make a way. But you, you've got to understand. And then just uh, going off what uh, Sister Nelly was saying, you know, sometimes you can cherry pick in the Bible what you want to hear. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you can go through and, you know, pick the favorite scriptures like pr being prosper and all that. But you have to understand the whole word of God works together. There's not little certain areas where, you know, if you can go and find scriptures that if you just want to find blessings, that's all you have to look at. Right. You know, oh, God's going to bless me. We, we turn, yeah, we turn into a, a, you can turn into a person that just, only time you open the Bible is when I want my blessing. Mm -hmm. What I want, you know, and, you know, you got to look because there's rebuke in there. There's all sorts of things in there that goes together and you just can't just, uh, you know, cherry pick what you want. Right. So I think those can all be barriers. I like how you said logic one and then a uh, cherry pick. I never heard yeah. that. I, I've, I've always heard like finding a loophole, right? Right. S to our advantage. So that's, that's very good. Very good stuff. Um, throughout the Bible, we see several examples of, of people going through conflict, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the conflict was because, was because God wanted to either use them or speak to them. So can you give us an example of a passage in the Bible um, that, that shows this? Want to start? Me? I'll start. Yeah, start. <laughs> I, I'm looking at you. I Everybody's thought you were looking at me. Yeah. I wasn't sure because I, I started the last one. Yeah. I started the last one, so I don't want. I don't want to feel like I'm trying to ho be a hog here. No, you're good. Go um, for it. I didn't pick someone in the Bible who is, you know, you would really know about. Maybe I guess this this character. This I don't like to say character because it makes it seem fiction. This person in the Bible can almost seem like a background figure, but I picked Zachariah, and Zachariah was married to Elizabeth, who was barren, and um, the reason I picked Zachariah is because he didn't listen, I guess he listened to, but he came up with excuses as to why he couldn't fulfill what God was telling him, so um, we know that in, in the chapter of Luke, it, uh, the book of Luke, chapter 1, um, Zachariah is at the temple and he's praying and we know at this point that he is very faithful to God his wife Elizabeth is very faithful to God but she's barren and he's not had a, been able to, to bear a son and so they're kind of looked down on um, mm -hmm. within their society but these were very big they were people of God they were very very faithful and so at this time, um, Zachariah's in the temple, and an angel of the Lord comes to him and tells him, you're going to bear a son. He's going to be, you're going to name him John. He's going to prepare the way for the Lord. He's going to prepare people for the Lord. And instead of Zachariah just accepting it, the first thing he says is, but I'm so old. I can't. How is this even possible? And because he didn't just accept it, he started in his mind going through all of the reasons why this can't be right. There's no way. Um, the angel of the Lord said, you know, I, God sent me to tell you this, but now you're going to be silent until this child is born and circumcised because you wouldn't just receive it. Mm -hmm. And I think that he, it's kind of like what JD said, we, we, um, use our own weaknesses against why we can't listen and accept the word of God. And so he's mute he can't say a word. He comes out of this temple. Nobody really knows what's going on. He can't explain to Elizabeth. I mean, it was just this huge game of charades. <laughs> and so he has this son, and this the son is, as we know, John the Baptist, and he really is, he is a key figure. And I think it's really important to point out that God didn't have to use Elizabeth and Zachariah. He could have, mm -hmm. you know, picked two other parents for John. But he picked those two, and I think that most most importantly, God will use the desires of our heart to not only fulfill our wants, 
but fulfill his will. Yes. Yeah, so listening, say, uh, talk about this character, um, you know, it's kind of funny because we're in the process of, uh, of uh, having a child, right? So we, I've gone through all the process of the reversal, all that, all that fun <laughs> stuff. Yes. So I hope that you're not calling me old or anything. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not calling you old, but uh-huh. if God wants to make you mute for not <laughs> just kidding, I'm totally, totally kidding. But yeah, there, there are some, some similarities, I guess. And, um, I, I barely made that connection there. I barely yeah, made that connection. It's a very so. unique, you yeah. know, time in our lives. So. Well, thanks for sharing that. Appreciate Thank that. You. <laughs> um, sure. you want to go next, Nellie? Sure. <laughs> I knew it was all about the baby. <laughs> 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 Um, I chose Moses because in chapter 3 of Exodus, when he sees the burning bush and he comes to the burning bush and God ta- speaks to him and asks him to go to, his, to the children of Israel and to, um, and to let them know that he was going to deliver them and he was to go to Pharaoh and ask him to let God's children go, he asks, uh, but who am I to do this? And uh, what am I going to say? And to the children of Israel, I'm going to, he had just come out of there because he had killed someone. And so he was running from yeah. there. And now God's asking him to go to the king. Well, of course, he doesn't feel like he's the right person for it. And in chapter four, when God continues to speak to him and continues to tell him how this is going to take place and what miracles are going to happen. He asked, but uh, what if wh- what if they don't believe me? Uh, what if they don't accept me? And God explains the next step. And in verse 10 of chapter 4, he says, but I'm not eloquent. I, I am slow of speech. Mm-hmm. And God tells him, I'm with you. And in verse 13, he finally says, please send someone else. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord becomes angry, but he said, okay. And so he agreed to allow Aaron to be his voice and Moses to be God's voice. But... Um, it sounds to me like Moses took a lot of convincing yeah. from God himself. Yeah. Not unlike us sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what it comes down to. A lot of it is just us, right? right. Mm-hmm. We doubt ourselves. It's the self-confidence. But isn't it, um, isn't it awesome how once you, once you get a true relationship with God, mm-hmm. that stuff falls into place. Your confidence falls into place. Mm-hmm. Your goals fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you believe that you can achieve things that before maybe you thought, uh, I'm not sure if I can do this. But that's the kind of confidence that we get with God. Um, what about you, J.D.? Um, I'm going to use one, you know, we know a lot about Jonah, you know, everybody yeah. knows know Jonah, Jonah and yep. the whale, um, but sometimes you don't, you don't read to the story leading up to that, you yeah. know, cause he was called f- to God to go, you know, preach at Nineveh and, and have them, uh, you know, repent, you know, but Jonah was using his own logic, his own mind that, you know, he, he the, the, the Ninevites were so, uh, uh, you know, cr- you can yeah. say crazy, wild out there, whatever. Bad. But um, they were also, you know, to Jonah's own people, very, you know, they tra- treated him wrong and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So um, Jonah put in his own mind that he was going to do what he wanted to do, mm-hmm. not what God wanted right. him to do. God wanted, you know, this would be a great, you know, example for God's forgiveness and turning people around from, from repentance of their sins. And, you know, Jonah did not want them to have anything to do with God. You know, he didn't want them to have that luxury. Mm-hmm. So he ran. And, you know, you, you know, you can run from God, but you can't hide from him. And, you know, he, you know, we all know the story. He, he even went in the opposite of direction of Nineveh. So, you know, he got, gets on the boat, a storm's happening. And, you know, if uh, you're on the boat, you know, he wasn't too smart because he told the people on the boat, the sailors, well, it's because I'm a Hebrew and I'm running from God. And as soon as they threw him off the storm stopped so you know uh he should have just wrote it out if you wanted to keep going but you you can't hide from god and you know then we look at he spent three days and three nights in the belly of a whale Mm -hmm. you know and it i'm sure that wasn't luxurious you know uh you know our our stomachs hold acid you know not like the the movies yeah like he's just sitting in there you know lots of room and space and collecting his thoughts you know it's inside you know an actual creature and then you know, you got to think it's eating other things, other fish and whatever else mm-hmm. in the ocean. So you got to think of the smell and everything. But he it, and, you know, even when that happened, you know, the, the whale spit him out. He, he went, but he still didn't want to do that. You know, he was still trying to run from it. And, you know, uh, it, sometimes you've got to just give in because uh, you're hindering your own uh, blessing, because I'm sure if he would have just got got the word and went straight to it. You know, and and he could have seen and be more joyful for what the people were having. 
you know, being repented and stuff and seeing a change in them. But, you know, he still didn't want to, you know, uh, succumb to that or even see that. And it was because of he was using his own feelings, you know. And sometimes we got to separate our feelings away from what God wants us to do. Yeah. Because you you might, you know, witness to someone that you don't really like or something like that. Or maybe they hurt you in the past. But the the goal is what's, where is their soul going to be? We want to be able to use, if God's going to use me, to save my arch enemy that he's going to use me. I'm yeah. not going to, you know, sit there and dwell on that and think about hate and stuff like that because as Christians, we're supposed to be forgiving anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and then I was just off the top of my head. I was, I also was thinking about Mary and Martha, you know, their, their brother died Lazarus and they, they were, they witnessed God doing all those things, mm -hmm. but they, with their own mind, you know, well, if Jesus was here, this wouldn't have happened. Their faith was only when they could yeah. see Jesus, you know, and you've got, you got to understand it you got to have faith even when, when, when he, you yeah, know, can't you can't him. see him on there, you know, or see him with your carnal eyes or be, look, the same thing. You can't have faith when you're just coming in church. It's got to be all the time because mm -hmm. you've got, how do we do it? You got to hear, you've got to put yourself in the word of God. You got to hear sound word. And if you don't, things will happen. Mm -hmm. I like that. So putting, putting aside your personal feelings, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for our last discussion piece, I would like for you to uh, talk about a time in your life where you had, to stop the noise around you and really listen to God. What did it take and was it worth it? So uh, Nellie, we'll start with you on this one. Okay, I, I know that I've shared this before, but after my husband and I had been separated for seven years, I know that I heard clearly in my spirit, it was a, the voice of God that said, you know what you need to do. And I was in church, I was in a church service when he spoke that. And my first thought was, oh no, please, no way, I can't, I don't want to. I can't and I don't want to. And this went on for about a month. Every time that um, they had an altar call and and I, I, I would just pray and ask God to have his way in me and he would remind me that he wanted me to do that one thing. And I knew, it, and it was just between God and I. Nobody yeah. else knew. Mm -hmm. I couldn't share with anybody else because it was so private and so personal. And so what it took was I had to lay down fear and I had to lay down pride because God was asking me to reconcile to my husband and I had to stay, take a step of faith and I had to uh, approach him and I had to talk to him about it. Yeah. And I th I th I'm glad you brought that up. I think what happens to a lot of people is, is when they're going through something like that, like that kind of decision making, right? They tend to, I guess, get advice from everybody around. Right. And a lot of times that is the worst thing because what happens is a lot of times we already know what the answer is. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, we do. We're again, we're trying to find some kind of loophole. a loophole mm -hmm. for it, for what we want. Yeah. So for you to do that is uh, it shows your character and that shows maturity on mm -hmm. so many levels. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, JD, what about you? Um, I, mine is kind of geared towards uh, my, my personal finances and stuff and, and learning how to be a giver. Um, that was something I struggled with. I, you know, I, I would hear from God, you know, you know, give to this, give to that. But I always would think, you know, with, you know, with, m with me, it was, well, I can't afford that. You know, uh, when the churches would need, church needs a vow or helping out with someone with groceries or something, that was a thing that I struggled with. You know, I, mm -hmm. it was like, well, I barely have enough. You know, thinking with my mind, I barely have enough. How is he going to, you know, if I give my last, you know, 20 to, to this person, how is God going to, mm -hmm. you know, bless me you know it's never happened to me and you know i was thinking yeah. with with my carnal mind and mm -hmm. not understanding that if i gave i would be blessed you know and or i would be taken care of or my family would be taken care of and i think that's something that's starting out as a young christian you can struggle with a lot yeah. and i think you know now that i've served the lord so many years i understand that you know it's giving th the best thing you can do and i think that's you know one of the things that has helped me you know it was it was always a struggle, especially early in the early, you know, all struggle to pay tithes, struggle to pay offerings. And you don't understand that, you know, what blessings can come to you. You know, you, you know, you, you can see, well, man, how come, you know, I'm, I'm giving to these uh, pastors and they're driving new vehicles and they, they got the best things. They're, mm -hmm. they're taking people out to eat, you know, they don't need it. And <laughs> it's like, you know, you, it's none of our business anyway. It's, right. you know, it's God's. Business, if yes. God's telling you to do something, you need to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, we, we don't need to question God or question mm -hmm. it. Hey, well, how come God? No, 
it's not going to work. So, you know, I think that was a thing I struggled with with finances. I, uh, for me, I think uh, when I really like kind of like stopped the noise or separated was when um, probably when I was in 17, 18, because I didn't have, uh, you know, I had Desi at the time. Right. Mm-hmm. So the goals that I should be, I guess, aiming for, according to other people, professionals and teachers and counselors like that was different from mine because I still felt like I could reach success and still have Mm -hmm. and still do what I want to do as far as going to college and be be a how do you say it Uh, a traditional student right Right. someone that goes to school uh, college right afterwards so I think um, that took a lot because I was I I faced disappointment well for one I knew I messed up right as a teen father but on top of that I got disappointed I was disappointed because of other people telling me hey maybe you shouldn't do this you should probably do something else just because you have a child and things like that. You know, mm-hmm. you're, at the time I was married to my first wife and you should probably do this and just, it, it'll probably be easier that way. And I remember just kind of separating that and, and thinking, of course, uh, I had a lot of support from, from my parents, of course. They're saying, you know what, uh, you can do it. It's gonna be difficult, but you can do it. Right. It's how bad do you want it, do you, do you want it? Mm-hmm. And I think, um, I think the desire that I had along with guidance from God and, and uh, his strength kind of helped me to achieve goals that I that I that I had wanted so right, right. Um, you want to add anything to that Dom? yeah um, to, to say that there was a specific time would would take too long for me to go through my memory there are just too many times um, I've experienced times where I've had to to stop the noise around me in my career in my personal life mm-hmm. um, you know I've o- there's always there's always times where I've been told um, you're not skilled enough or you don't know how this works or you're too weak minded. And, and it's, um, you know, at one time I was, uh, 20, God, I'm 27, right? I was like 24, 25, and I was managing a a, a medical practice with 23 employees. And I had women underneath me who were old enough to be my grandmother. And, you know, looking back, I, I think, how did I even manage? <laughs> I, I had, at the time, I hadn't even had my bachelor's degree. I was still going, you know, and it's, it's true what we've said here tonight. When you get that relationship with God, he gives you that self-esteem and he gives you that confidence. Mm-hmm. So now it's really easy for me just to shut people up when I hear them tell me that I can't do this or I can't do that or I'm too weak for this or too weak for that. Stopping the noise around us is something that we have to continually do yeah. every day. If we want to truly hear from God, we have to shut down sometimes our own minds, the, the words of others, what we're hearing in, on television. Um, we live in a world right now where I think a lot of us need to just shut down and stop listening to what he says, she says, they say. What does God say? And at the end of the day, that's who we need to follow. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing that. Um, I, I love that. I learn something every week, right? And it helps me. Um, it helps learning how people get through storms and how they, you know, get through certain things. But before, you know, so before we head out, that's going to conclude our Bible study. I think it's awesome. Um, before we head out, we got a couple of things to cover. We're going to go and take up tithes and offerings. Uh, you should be seeing that number. Sister Nelly, do you know that number by some chance? Do you have it memorized? Uh, I don't. She, okay. No it's worries. No worries. It's on the screen. Yeah. The only reason I'm asking because she always has it. Is it because you have it written down? Uh, yeah. You're I so agree. organized. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So <laughs> you don't have to worry about finding I had, it. I, it's written down in my <laughs> other notebook. <laughs> I didn't mean to put it on the spot. It starts with a two. But I it's all that. good though. So it, the number should be on your screen. Um, your contributions have helped us to, to sustain a growing and effective ministry. Um, because of your giving, we have we have helped numerous people and agencies yeah. in the community. Uh, our goal has always been to tell people how good that God is and that there is hope for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. So from the panel and I, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And we will see you on Sunday. God bless you.